What's up everyone, my name is Johnny. In this video I will talk about some of the basics of Jupyter Notebook so that you will be comfortable using it and also to prepare you for the future Python tutorials. But also I will scratch the surface of some advanced topics so that anyone who are interested to learn more will have some directions. Before we jump into details, I want to first give you some idea about what a Jupyter Notebook is capable of and why it has become popular especially among data scientists. What is currently shown on the screen is an example Jupyter Notebook on a face recognition project. As I'm scrolling down to the page, you can see that the notebook is divided by sections. It doesn't just have Python scripts but it also contains texts as titles or descriptions and it can display some pictures, charts as well as tables. As you can imagine, these powerful functionalities for displaying a variety of information make Jupyter Notebooks so much easier to comprehend than a plain Python script. You can also easily add explanations or observations nearby your codes and adding pictures and tables to support your observations not only that, people who are reading your notebook can interact with it, try adding or changing a few things and observe how the result could have changed through different parameters. After seeing an example, let's start by walking through how to launch a Jupyter notebook. To do that, simply launch the Anaconda Navigator. Inside the Navigator, by default, the base environment already has the Jupyter notebook installed. You can simply click on the launch button under the Jupyter Notebook icon and the Jupyter Notebook will be launched. However, if you have just created a new environment, you will need to install it first. So, for example, I just create a Python tutorial environment. Let's switch to that environment now. Now we are already in this new environment. If you can see, under Jupyter Notebook icon, instead of a launch button, we now have an install button. So we just need to click install and then automatically the navigator will install the Jupyter Notebook for us. I now have the Jupyter Notebook installed. Let's launch it. Jupyter Notebook is web based, so it will be launched by your default web browser. In my case, the default web browser is Microsoft Edge. So you open a new tab on my Microsoft Edge browser. On the top, we can see that the Jupyter Notebook is not really connected to the internet. We are connecting to the local host through the port 8890. The initial screen you will see is the file system on the default directory, which in my case is my users folder in C drive. You can navigate through the file system by simply click on the folder to go one level down or you can click on the individual folder directory on the top of the toolbar to go to the specific folder up. Now let's go to documents and create a new folder here. To create a new folder, just click on this new button and then scroll down to this folder, select the folder. Once you select that, a untitled folder will automatically be generated for you. Let's rename this folder to be Python Tutorials. Let's go to the Python Tutorials folder and create a Jupyter Notebook. To create a Jupyter Notebook, we again go to this new button and click on this Python 3 option. Once you do that, a new browser tab will automatically be opened for you. And first thing we can do is to rename this Jupyter Notebook by default. The name is untitled. So let's name this Jupyter Notebook to be Python Tutorial 02 Jupyter Notebook Beginner's Guide. Jupyter Notebook breaks the code into cells, which are simple code blocks. Right now, we only have one cell on the screen. We can start typing some code already. For example, we can use it as a calculator. Let's simply type 1 plus 1. To execute the cell, there are a couple of options. One easy way is to click this wrong button on the top. 
it outputs the number 2 and automatically create a second cell for us. I want to show you other methods for running a cell. Let's type 2 multiplied by 2 and select the cell tab on the top. You will notice that there are a number of different options for running a cell. The first option simply run a cell and that's it. The second cell outputs number 4 but notice that it didn't automatically create another cell below which is different than the run cell button that we clicked before. To force the Jupyter Notebook to create a new cell after the execution, we need to go to the cell button again and select this run cell and insert below. You can see that a new cell is created and insert below. The other options are pretty self-explanatory. Run cells and select below will select the cell below after execution. It won't create a new cell unless you are currently executing the cell at the very bottom. Run all will run all the cells in sequence. Run all above will execute all the cells above the selected cell in sequence. And run all below will execute the selected cell and all the cells below. One thing to notice is that there are shortcuts displaying on the right. For example, if we press Shift plus Enter, it will automatically run cells and select the cell below. If I go over, if I select the first cell and then press Shift plus Enter, <coughs> it will execute the first cell and then automatically select the second cell. Now I want to quickly talk about the two different modes of a cell, namely the edit mode and the comment mode. Edit mode allows you to write and edit the scripts inside the code block, and comment mode allows you to perform operation on the structure of the cells. For example, if you want to insert a new cell above, then you will need to be in the comment mode. To switch to the edit mode, Simply click inside the code block. In the edit mode, the border color of the cell turns green, and there will be a pencil icon shown on the top right, which says we are in an edit mode. To switch to the command mode, simply press the escape button, or you can click anywhere in the cell outside of the code block. Once you are in the command mode, the border color will turn blue, and the pencil icon will disappear. Once you are in command mode, you can press A to insert a cell above or press B to insert a cell below. So A stands for above and B stands for below. You can also delete a cell by pressing D twice. For all shortcuts that are available in both command mode and edit mode, we can check them in the keyboard shortcuts under the help menu. So right now it lists all the shortcuts in the command mode and then also all the shortcuts in the edit mode. Notice that there are some incremental input and output number shown beside the cells. This number represents the order of the execution. Every time we execute a cell, this number will increase by 1. This number represents how Jupyter Notebook tracks the execution result in order. For example, we can assign a value, let's say we assign a value of 5 to the variable x. If I execute this cell, you'll see that the execution number is 6. If we print the variable x on the top, you'll see that we have execution number 7 and the number 5 is printed out. So even though print statement is above the cell where we assign the variable x, it still works because Jupyter Notebook doesn't track the execution result based on the position of the cells, but it is based on the execution order of the cells, which is represented by these input and output numbers on the left. Having said that, in most cases, you will still want to organize your scripts from top to bottom for readability purposes, 
and also to avoid any issues if we want to execute the entire notebook all together using this run all options. Another thing that I use a lot is the interrupt kernel button which is represented as a square button shown on the toolbar. If, if for some reason the code has been executing for a unreasonable long time to finish and you want to stop the execution you can press this button. I will use a while loop to demonstrate this. We will go over the while loop in details in the later tutorial so don't worry if you don't entirely understand the code so I'll try while loop true hello world I'm basically asking Jupyter Notebook to print even the number of hello world as you can see it will not stop because this is an infinite loop to interrupt the kernel Simply click on this black square button. Okay, if we scroll to the end of the result, you'll see that we have an error message at the end and the execution has been stopped. Next, I want to briefly go over what's called a markdown cell. So far, we have been working on the code cell. We can check the cell type by looking at this cell type display on the toolbar. To change the cell type from code cell to a markdown cell, simply click on this drop down button and select markdown. Or you can toggle between a cell code and a markdown code by using shortcuts. To switch to a markdown cell, make sure the cell is in command mode. Now it's turning blue so it's in command mode and press M. Then we are in the markdown cell. Now if you want to switch back to the code cell, we can press Y. Now we are switching back to the code cell. So what is Markdown? Markdown is basically a markup language that enables a user to add formatting elements to plain text. For example, I can simply type this is a sentence and then execute. The cell will display this is a sentence but I can add formatting element to my text as well. For example, a pound sign signifies that the text following it will be formatted as headings. This is heading level 1. Now if I execute it, you'll see that the heading will have a larger font and it will be bold. More pound sign indicates higher level and smaller fonts. So for example, if I use double pound sign, and type this is heading level 2. Once I execute it, you can see that we are displaying the text as a heading on level 2. We can also format our text as bold texts. Bold texts are surrounded by two asterisks. For example, this sentence is in bold. Now if we execute it, you'll see that the list text will be formatted in bold. We can also do italic. To do that, we surround our text using a single asterisk on either side. So this sentence is in italic. I'm just giving you some simple examples of the markdown languages, but it can do much more. You can find out more by googling markdown cheat sheet. Now let's talk about the exclamation marks, which allows you to execute terminal commands on the underlying operating system. For example, we can use the exclamation mark dir to print out the current directory. Or to check our Python version, we can use the exclamation mark Python dash dash version. This will output what's the Python version that we are currently using. Another thing that we can do is we can list out all the Python packages by using the exclamation mark conda list. This will list all the Python packages that is available under the current environment. There are also something called the magic commands which are special commands that are available for users to use inside Jupyter Notebook. Magic commands start with either 
a single or double percent signs. Single percent signs represents the line magic, which takes only one single line of code as the argument to the magic command. One example of the line magic is the percent sign LSMAGIC. This magic command will list all the magic commands that are available in the Jupyter Notebook. As you can see, there are line magics which has only a single percent sign in front of it. There are also something called the cell magics, which has double percent sign. So the difference between a line magic and a cell magic is that the line magic takes only one line as the argument to the command, and then the cell magic takes the entire cell as the argument to the command. Another useful line magic is the percent sign who this magic command will list all the names of the variables that are currently being used. There is another one that's very similar to this, which is percent sign whose. Now it, it doesn't just output the variable names, but it also outputs the data type and the value of the variables. One useful cell magic is the double percent sign time. This magic command times how long did it take to complete execution of the cell. Let me quickly write a for loop. A for loop basically allows the user to run a block of code to be run multiple times. So don't worry if you don't understand this part, I will give a detailed tutorial on the for loop in the future. But right now I'm just going to write for i in range 10,000 Okay, first of all, I need to use the magic command time. I'll initialize another variable I call y. So y will equals to y plus i. Uh, basically, this loop will add all the numbers from 1 to 99,999. It takes about 26 milliseconds to complete this execution. Lastly, make sure you save your work appropriately by clicking on the Save File button on the toolbar. There are a couple of options in terms of exporting the Jupyter Notebook. You can go to File, hover over Download Us. You can either download your Jupyter Notebook as a HTML file, or you can simply export it as a pure Python script with a .py format. And this basically concludes what I want to cover for this video. If you feel this video is useful and you would like to see more contents like this in the future, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Until next time.